Hello YouTubers, my name is X-Factor. I'm a Battlefield player and YouTube producer who currently uses software solutions such as Mithras Action and DxTory to record and capture my gameplay experience to share with the world on YouTube. But there can be some major cons associated with those two pieces of software, including they both cost money. They're not cheap. Number two, they both take up valuable hardware resources which can cost you frames in game. And of course, there are some issues while running DX Tory on Windows 8 or 8.1. It's extremely buggy and not too reliable at the moment. So today we're going to talk about and more importantly showcase NVIDIA GeForce Shadow Play Recording Solution. This is a free to download beta starting tomorrow, October 28th, 2013. It'll also be a free to use feature when the full release rolls out. To use this, you must jump through some of these requirements. Do you have a GeForce GTX desktop GPU, 600 series or higher? Do you have the right CPU, which you can read down below, 4 gigs of RAM, Windows 7 or 8, GeForce 331.43 driver or later? So let's talk about the gaming rig, my test rig, before we jump to this Battlefield 3 footage, showcasing it and talking about the pros and the cons. My testing rig right now is a single EVGA GTX 780 super clocked. Not running them in SLI for this test. i7 3770K at 4.3, 16 gigs of RAM, 1080p resolution at 120 hertz with driver version 331.65, Windows 8.1 Pro 64 bit. So before we get to the game footage, let's talk about some of the settings that you can utilize while using the Shadow Play. And remember, this is a beta, an open beta that starts tomorrow. Your download might differ from what I have on my screen and some of the options available, so let's keep that in mind. First and foremost, on and off button, this uses the H.264 encoding chip that's available on the 6 and 700 desktop GTX cards. It's going to be recording at 1080p at 60 FPS. There is no way for me to change that, but I can change the quality of it low, medium, high. For today's test, we're going to be recording on high at 1080p at 60 FPS. So there's not a lot of options there yet. The other knock I have is audio options. Uh, Shadow Play has a small issue. It captures in-game sound and communication such as Skype, TeamSpeak, and Mumble. Everybody else talking but you. That's a small problem. But... Let's talk about the two modes available, one of which is called manual, which is available in every other gaming software out there that records. It starts on a key press. It stops in the key press. Want to record for 10 seconds? Want to record for two hours? Just hit the key. But how many of you who've done something absolutely crazy looked up and realized you weren't recording? There was no indicator. Probably smashed your keyboard, did some kick flips in the air, then calmed your jimmies down. Well, that's what shadow time is. Now, let's say I'm not recording at all. There's a slider here. If you're a montage maker or you like just collecting epic clips, you can slide this on high, medium or low, doesn't matter, but you're going to see this number jump. This It went from 375 to 133. Uh, from one minute all the way up to 20 minutes. So how does this work? As long as you have it bound to a key, mine's number pad 3, Let's say I'm not recording at all. GeForce Experience is running in the background, and I do something crazy. Let's say I set this at three minutes. I simply hit the key bind that's associated with that. Again, it's number pad three for me, and it captures the last three minutes from that key press. No more not capturing epic moments or funny moments. It's always there. So you can run this together. You can enable shadow and manual recording mode so you don't have to have one or the other on they can both be available to use so with all this craziness does it really affect your frames and how much because again this is 60 fps at 1080p let's get to the in-game footage where i'm using a combination of ultra high medium low at 1080p at 120 hertz Welcome to Golf of Oman, a Battlefield 3 multiplayer conquest map which absolutely brutalizes your frames through this entire construction zone. I use this for all my benchmarks just to show you as bad as bad gets. And this has to do more with poor optimization and coding than anything else. So as you see me flying around, you're going to see a number in the top right hand corner. That's the in-game Battlefield 3 command allowing me to portray my frames. And again, I'm recording on high at 1080p at 60 frames a second. If I did that using DxTory 
or Mithras action, it would be bogging down my CPU and eating up valuable frames. I would be losing anywhere from 5 to 20 frames depending on what program and what codec I'm using. With Shadow Play, I'm losing zero frames. I literally didn't believe this and sat in certain spots of the monitor or screen, looked at things, started Shadow Play, stopped it, started DX Story, stopped it, started Mithras Action, and stopped it. And I could see the drops with those other two pieces of software, but I saw zero drops. And I'm writing at 60 frames a second, not 30 like I record with DX Story and Mithras Action. So when you're recording at 1080p at 60 frames, the file sizes have to be massive, right? No. They're extremely small. This is only 15 megabits a second of write speed required. That's it. So in DX Story and Mithras Action, depending on the codec, some of them require a much higher uh, write requirement. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 megs a second. And what can happen to your hard drive? It's getting beat up and brutalized. What if it has a small hiccup? What happens to you on screen? You stutter and lag like a mofo and usually put it getting a couple bullets in between your eyes and you die. It always happens at the worst uh, spot possible, but it does happen from time to time. But when you're writing 15 megs or so, that's taking it easy on your hard drive. Not to mention, your storage space requirements have drastically been reduced for the quality that you're getting on your screen. So why record at 60 FPS? Because you can do several things with it. Number one, other websites not named YouTube allow you to upload at 60 FPS. YouTube caps you at 30, but if you want to slow something down, make a montage, say, highlight an epic moment in slow-mo, it's still as smooth as a baby's backside. It's unbelievable. And if you're a live streamer, Twitch support is coming to this software solution that NVIDIA has very soon. And again, this has to do with the onboard encoder, the H.264 that's available on the 600 and 700 series GTX desktop cards. Overall, I'm completely impressed and overwhelmed with the quality, smoothness, and lack of resources that this thing uses up on both the hard drive side and, of course, CPU video card side. It literally costs me zero frames, gives me 1080p at 60 FPS, and only writes at 15 megabits a second. That's unbelievable compared to the same requirements that I would want in DX Toy or Mithras Action would be massive file sizes and be absolute CPU hogs, costing me even more frames in game. So the only knocks I have on this is some of the audio options. You can't choose your mic right now. Hopefully they iron that out. Then of course I would love to see my frames per second and not use the Battlefield 3 in-game overlay, which everybody sees or a secondary product such as DX Story or Mithras Action have that running in the background as well as you see more shoddy piloting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget this is a free to download beta starting tomorrow, October 28th. And if you don't have time to grab the beta, this will be a free release in a couple weeks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to thumbs up. We'll see you.